Hello and welcome to uh, the Toppers interview. Uh, it is my pleasure to have Dr. Subhash with me today, uh, who has uh, you know finally qualified as a rank two in the INISS exams. And uh, before we get started, uh, I would just invite Dr. Subhash to first introduce himself, you know, from where he is, what he did, UG, PG, etc., and then we'll take it forward. Good evening, sir. Myself is Dr. Subhash. I, I am from Andhra. I did my UG from Kathir Medical College, Guntur. And I did my residency from Gandhi Medical College, Bhopal. And I recently passed out uh, in 2025 March. And this is my first attempt of INI. Right, right. And uh, how was your overall experience, you know, with respect to the exam, uh, the questions, and then stage two and everything? So if you could tell us about it. Sir, um, in written exam, out of 80 questions, 60 questions are from infectious disease subject. And out of them, 30 to 40 questions are from core microbiology. Rather than um, physician, general medicine point of view, they are uh, asking, they are concentrating more on microbiological uh, point of view of the branch, like uh, microscopic features of uh, uh, Intermeva, histolytica, etc. They asked uh, more questions towards the core microbiology rather than medicine part. And this time, medicine part is rather easy compared to last year, sir. 20 questions from general medicine part is quite easier this time. Right. And uh, so, so, overall, what do you think? So, how many questions did you attempt? And, you know, like, how did you go about the paper? Sir, I didn't went too aggressive. I just attempted 70 questions because in ID, the competition is very less and uh, the main motto is to just qualify. So I didn't answer any question which I don't know. I answered 70 questions. Uh, out of them, six, uh, 45 to 50 questions are like, uh, I definitely know these answers. And as 20, I did the guesswork. Mm -hmm. I evaluated uh, among the two options, sir. Great. I mean, this is one of the very important takeaways, I think, you know, because uh, for a lot of subjects, probably you have to attempt a lot more. Uh, but for ID, your major goal should be to, you know, cut out, you know, just pass the cutoff marks first. And then you can, any which way, there are lots of seats. The competition is not that high, you know, as in other branches. So probably the strategy that you took is one of the best strategies, uh, which I always recommend that, you know, be sure about what you're answering. At the end of the day, if you're scoring more than 50%, that is good enough to get you an interview call. And when you're yes. saying like core microbiology, I mean, uh, you know, like how much of that is still covered or manageable with clinical medicine knowledge and how much you think actually needs to be dealt in with, you know, a lot of microbiology reading? Sir, uh, I have seen my seniors my senior suggested me to read microbiology textbooks again. And uh, without uh, doing that part, I think I couldn't have managed getting through the exam, sir. Right, right. So it looks like uh, pretty much, you know, core microbiology is being asked. Yes, the but this time paper is set in that way, sir. Last year's paper, I have seen review recall questions. But this time, they ask more uh, microbiological questions rather than medicine part. Correct. So this is something which is, you know, something which is luck based also, because uh, since the department at Ames is run by both medicine and microbiology, you know, uh, it, uh, it depends on who is setting the paper, uh, even under microbiology, which subspeciality of microbiology is in charge of setting the questions and all that can really influence the type of questions you're getting. Right. Uh, but this is really difficult because, yeah, please go on. They ask questions like, what are the techniques for a stool, uh, for stool examination, what techniques do you use for dilution of stool sample? And uh, they ask, what are the guidelines you have to maintain in the lab if you are tackling with BSL-3 organism? These questions right. are pretty um, micro-oriented rather than medicine. But these questions, I don't feel that, you know, it is worth preparing for such kind of questions because as an infectious diseases physician also, probably you will never require this kind of knowledge. Uh, even when you're working in the lab, 
you know there will be people taking care of these things and uh, i'm i'm assuming a little but a lot of even microbiologists who are not doing this on a regular basis even they wouldn't be remembering a lot of these things right so yes. it's really tough to prepare for certain set of questions especially parasitology department in microbiology at aims is a pretty tough department when it comes to you know setting up questions not just for entrance exams but even when you are doing your dm or md micro over there it's one of the tougher departments when it comes to setting up questions so there are few areas where it is nearly impossible to you know uh, prepare no matter how much you read because first of all it is going to be difficult to cover certain things and then the other challenge is to retain that kind of information you know like it's really yes, really but uh, but yes of course microbiology is important uh, however in terms of when we discuss clinical you know uh, medicine probably it's very tough to cover all microbiological aspects uh, yes. but uh, maybe we will see uh, i will speak to people at maro if you know at least the mic- i don't know whether microbiology modules are accessible to you the ones that are for uh, pg preparation no sir they are not accessible to us whatever the strategy that i followed this i read whatever the classes you told me i just uh, read all those i visited all those lectures apart from these lectures i used shivgas ma'am notes which i right. prepared used for my pg preparation Right. i just compared both the notes and i used to write the extra points which i felt that they might come in the exam part right i mean that's a pretty reasonable strategy because you know uh, there's a lot in microbiology like infectious diseases as a subject it's actually a combination of two big subjects one is internal medicine and the other is medical microbiology you know and both these subjects are pretty huge so the amount of reading that can go into it i mean there is no end to it you know for example if we start discussing uh, any infection say for example uh, first one hour can just become a discussion of microbiology and the second hour can just become a discussion on uh, you know the clinical aspects so it's really tough and then it will be just like preparing for your dm course rather than you know preparing for the dm entrance so that is one of the challenges but any which way uh do you feel that you know the modules that we have tried to cover uh, there are few videos that are still pending for you know that will be uploaded because i did see the recall questions and uh, we had already recorded those they are about to get uploaded so but do you still feel that you know it was in some way helpful while you are preparing for your exams sir whatever the topics you have uh, covered they are pretty de- um useful and uh, i don't think you can't incorporate microbiological part in those videos and you you almost covered entire harrison infectious part so i don't think you need not to add any video um, content apart from what that is available in the maru itself right but uh, 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 microbiological part i just get yeah so what we are doing is for example i saw that liver abscess case question was there so all of that is already been you know it's probably under the final stages of uh, editing and all that will get uploaded one thing that i really want to cover in our subsequent uh, recordings is diagnostics so again diagnostics is a huge aspect but what i'll try to do is make it very concise so that people understand what is a rapid test what is an elisa what is a next gen sequencing what is multiplex pcr or pcr you know again these are so specialized as topics in themselves that i can't discuss them in details because even i don't understand those things in that great details but what i can what i want to do is put in a clinician's perspective basic understanding of a test and all that so that that i'm working on so that we'll incorporate uh, but so a lot we have discussed about the exam so just for our viewers for people who might still be in you know double minds as to what to do as a sub specialty uh first of all i really don't like calling dm branches as super specialties they are all sub specialties under medicine yes, they are sub specialties of medicine that what my history always says correct correct so medicine is and will always be the parent subject and everything else is a sub specialty under medicine so how do you how did you arrive at this decision for you know pursuing infectious diseases what do you tell to people who are still confused 
and are not able to decide like what could be those pointers for others sir as you yourself said that uh, every branch is in sub specialty rather than super specialty but i guess id and uh, rheumat are the only two subjects where you can uh, read on treat entire system again you will be treating you are you are going to treat every organ again and i don't think i don't consider these as sub specialties and they are just continuation of medicine i and that guy to who would like to continue in the medicine itself so i thought to continue as an id physician rather than opting other super specialties like cardio or neuro right right i mean it's really wonderful as a subject i mean i could give n number of examples but if i just give you few examples from last few days of my work uh, i mean we were working up a case where there is an infectious differential versus we are thinking of something like a cns lymphoma or a neurosarcoidosis right i can't just go there and say it is looking like an infection or not looking like an infection my my job is to actually trying to understand what else it could be right if it could be a lymphoma it could be no cardia it could be sarcoid you know whatever it could be then i just saw a patient yesterday kidney transplant patient the call is given for a suspected uti but when you review the case i could detect you know tacrolimus causing a ttp like presentation there is cystocytosis there is worsening aki which was thought to be because of you know uh, uti but it turns out to be it could just be a part of ttp which is tacrolimus related right so there are lots of things uh, on a daily basis you know i see a pancreatitis patient maybe i am looking at the etiology of pancreatitis in addition to managing the complications of pancreatitis i am seeing a colitis patient i am not just thinking of infectious causes of colitis i am also thinking of drug induced ischemic colitis so it is like i mean if i were to personally say except for ophthalmology you know the eye related infections there's pretty much everything else that you need to know in a fair bit of details why is that important is see we are a consulting branch so if you get a referral you know and if you have to talk to the primary physician maybe that person is from critical care maybe that person is from rheumat pulmo gastro whatever but when you discuss the case with them you know it should feel like that you know the patient you understand the clinical presentation rather than just trying to pitch in with certain infectious differentials right so i really find that really uh, rewarding and uh, as you grow as you see more and more cases interact with a lot of people from different specialties this is again one thing that i feel is a great advantage of course depending on the setup you are working at uh, that you get to interact with a lot of specialists so things that you don't know that you don't understand which will require a lot of reading on your part you can probably just have a cup of coffee with your colleagues from other specialties and in 5 minutes probably you learn something new when you're sitting with them so that's one thing but uh, so other than that like uh, what do you what do you plan for yourself you think that you're looking for uh, you know somewhere outside you want to complete your dm go somewhere outside train further you want to come back to your native place have you thought about this any of this sir uh, after my dm i'm thinking to do fellowship in transplant uh... Oh, okay that's great that's great because i did a fellowship in transplant infectious diseases right and uh, very few places offer it at the moment but definitely whenever you're planning that do let me know uh, whatever i can help you with any letters or recommendations or whatever i can definitely help you with that also but that's a great thought because you know transplant numbers are going up day by day and managing infections in transplant patients is really challenging sometimes so i mean that's a great thought but uh, what else so what just just a little bit about yourself what are your hobbies and all like what do you enjoy doing sir uh, apart from my regular studies i would uh, i would uh, like to read a lot of novels and i am that travel go person sir i am always a backpacker and uh, it's one of the reason that i chose this branch i wanted that work life balance that's great yeah i'm sure 
it will offer you a good work life balance i mean the branch is such that you are more often than not not involved in an emergency situation even if there's an emergency sometimes you are able to manage it on the phone because most of the times uh, it will be about optimizing the treatment for a patient right so critical care people emergency people other specialties they know how to hit fast hit hard and then you can slightly chip in a little later refine the treatment and all that so so that way i think it does offer a good work life balance especially how it depends on how you manage work but yes compared to a lot of other specialties it is one of those that offers work life balance and of course delhi is a great place you know there's lots of uh, places you can just drive and uh, go about so you you'll enjoy it probably so i mean anything else you want to share with people who are preparing any tips you want to give anything that you feel is important sir uh, the only suggestion that i would give is apart from reading maro super specialty notes i would like them to read uh, the micro notes which they prepared for their uj days it definitely going to help in clearing the exam i think that's a great suggestion because uh, most people would have had some amount of preparation either during ug days or when they are writing the neat pg they would most of them prepare for microbiology yes, and sir. Uh, it's it's a really good thing if you can go through your notes it will really help you, you know, because we can't cover microbiology in details so a lot of those things will be really helpful and also if you read microbiology and then you see the id modules it also becomes relatively easier for you to understand because a lot of things i would be just you know superficially talking about when talking about an organism but once you have read microbiology you can actually read between the lines also especially when so i think that's great uh, and uh, i really wish you all the best and thank congratulations you. once again and thank uh, you we'll see each other again we'll be part of the same alumni group so don't worry about we'll we'll definitely meet once in a while thank you so much yeah all right then thank you